Hello and welcome to Earth Unplugged. Today we're getting into the anatomy of a killer, albeit a very small killer. This is a West African dwarf crocodile, and although it is a dwarf species, the smallest in the world, they're not normally this small. This is a hatchling. But that doesn't really matter for us too much because they're born killers. They don't need milk from mum, they have to catch their own food from day one. So we're gonna look into each of the elements of this incredible animal that make it such a good predator. So we'll start at the bottom first. To begin with, it's got this incredibly long tail. It's almost as big as its body. In fact, just about exactly the same. And this big fan-like tail really gives it loads of propulsion to drive it through the water when it needs to. And you can see not only that, but its back legs, particularly when compared to its front legs, are massive. Really, really big feet. And actually they've got this very strong muscle that runs around their thigh and into their tail as well. So it's really, a unit designed to thrust them forward. So they're ambush predators, so they get themselves into position very, very slowly until everything lines up right, the prey's just there, and then they use that tail and those big back legs to drive themselves forward and take it out. So along the back here, they've got these incredibly sort of tough, rigid scales, and they're so tough, in fact, they're ostified. They've got bones inside them. Um, so they're called scoots, and these are a great defense if anything's gonna try and attack them, because although they are the apex predator, they're also prey themselves. Being a dwarf species, they can get eaten by other crocodiles. So the scientific name of African dwarf crocodiles is Osteolamus tetraspis, and the tetraspis bit means four shields, and Osteolamus means bony throat, and that's really referring to this chunk of scale here. If I just get my scalpel here, I'll see if I can take it off for you. And it more or less comes out as a single piece. So these four scales just act as a sort of dorsal shield that protects its neck from any predators. They're incredibly well-armoured animals. So onto the head, if I lift it up here, you can see that its eyes and its nostrils are right at the top of its head, so it can hang more or less underneath the surface while still looking at its prey and breathing, but not revealing any of its position to its prey. And if I just open its mouth a bit, you can see in there, it's got all of its teeth already well developed, and they're needle sharp at the moment. And that means that they're already able to eat sort of invertebrate and insect prey, but it also means that even if they've got something quite difficult to eat, they can just grab hold of it and it, it won't be able to get away. Crocodile eyes are incredible machines. When they're under the water, they have what's called a nictitating membrane that slides across and acts like a pair of goggles so they can see underwater. But when they pop up to the surface, and you often see it, it'll seem to slide back sideways. It's sometimes called a third eyelid. So you can't quite see it on this specimen, but in the wild, you'll see crocodiles have got this really narrow vertical slit pupil. And the amount of light coming in means that they have a brilliant ability to focus up on their prey at the surface. So it really just sort of ties into their whole ambush strategy. Right, I think it's time to open him up to see that he's a predator on the inside as well as on the out. So the skin, actually, even though it's such a tiny hatchling, the skin's still very, very thick. What we found in our um, monitor lizard decomposition was that reptile skin has something called beta-carotene in, 